Hi everyone. I wanted to make a quick video just going over the hardware setup and then doing a quick demonstration of Pi Radio TNC network which was designed to work with ATAC in a way that doesn't require any plugins. So we'll go over the hardware. We'll start with the power. Here we've got an 18650 battery hooked into an 18650 power supply circuit and it converts that to 5 volts. It also has got some circuitry to uh, automatically cut off the power before the, the voltage gets too low and damages the battery. Um, anyway, so that goes over to the Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 0W. Any of the models with Wi-Fi will work fine. I'm using the 0W because it's the most power efficient and physically the smallest. Then we have a USB hub. And this is nothing special. Uh, I got it from Adafruit, same place as the Pi, and it's just, you, you plug and play, um, really nothing to configure there. Then there's the USB sound card, and this was also plug and play, also from Adafruit. Didn't require any drivers or anything special. It's got the uh, headphone and the mic input, and that goes to the circuit here. So this circuit interfaces between the radio and the sound card and controls push to talk as well. You can set this up with Vox. It's definitely not recommended. Vox has a very slow response speed in most radios and especially with the Bofangs. So it's uh, highly advisable to build a circuit like this. It also brings the audio levels kind of in line with each other and uh, does something with the impedance. I probably, um, as a ham radio guy, should know what that means, but I don't. Then moving on, we've got the wires, which go to the dreaded Bofang. And that is it. Um, oh, this, uh, sorry, this wire here, that controls the push to talk. That goes to GPIO 14, I believe. Um, it's configurable in the, the direwolf configuration file. It's called sdr.com. Um, and that's it. That's all there is to the hardware. It's very simple. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. And then there's the phone. So there's no uh, there's no wires between any of that. It all runs off the Wi-Fi from the phone. So the idea is that you just have all this stuff here uh, kind of packaged up and inside a, a backpack or uh, clipped onto the outside or something like that. Uh, Ideally, um, you'd sneak it on your buddy so that you don't even have to carry it. You just clip it on his pack when he's not looking. <laughs> um, and we've got here the enclosure that I've been working on. Uh, I've measured some stuff wrong a little bit. You can see how that actually doesn't uh, doesn't fit. So that was an oopsie. I got to go fix that. But this is all of that stuff just kind of put into a an enclosure, and it is these right next to each other, right about the same size as a Bofang radio, just a little bit bigger, about the same thickness, so it's kind of kind in line. It's not too gigantic, not the most compact thing either. Hopefully I can shrink it down a little bit. Um, but these are actually uh, that right there, that is that just with the plastic covering removed. That right there is that right there with the plastic cover removed. You, they're not even like glued together, you just kind of pull on them and the covers pop off. So super easy to put them into an, an enclosure like this. So, I'll move on to the demonstration now. And to do that, I have to switch cameras because I need this one, uh, my phone, to run ATAC. And here we go. So we've got our two phones set up. We got the Pi Radio TNC network over here connected to our first Bofang and our second Bofang connected to that one in the nice 3D printed case. And uh, let's start out with some uh, some chat messages. So, so right now the radios are off. Um, I'm going to switch them on in just a second here, but I want to just demonstrate that uh, it is really going over the radio. So sorry, this thing doesn't autofocus. Um, so we have to go to the all chat rooms. That's the only one that goes out over broadcast. So we'll just do a test. And we'll see that nothing happens on this one. 
Uh, and then I also have my uh, search and rescue pack down here. So there's another radio buried in there, um, so we can actually hear the uh, the sending and stuff going on. So um, anyway, uh, yeah. So you see nothing happened there. So let's turn the radios on, and then the correct volume setting for them is with the fat part of that little arrow thing facing exactly that way, and they're set to the uh, amateur radio frequency. Um, do the same with this one. There we go. Alright, and then we'll just do that again. And here we go. And message received. There we go, in all chat rooms, and there we go, test again. So, very good, so we'll just roger that one right back. See, that one is transmitting now. And we got roger. Alright, so, chat's working, and oh, I wonder if there's something, what that was. Oh, I think it was just sending the uh, the fact that we existed. Okay, so now we'll just uh, put ourselves on the map here. I've turned the GPS off just so I don't uh, show everybody where the house is at. Um, so we'll just place ourselves there. And there we go, we show up. KV95, KV95. And then we'll do the same with that one. Okay, and that one shows up, and so that works. Uh, you can send map markers and icons and stuff like that, so um, that's a fun one. Mm. Pick P. There we go. What does that even mean, pump? Okay, uh, so we've got our pump placed. And go to the little data page, and then we can send that, and we have to do broadcast. Uh, it doesn't work when you send directly, at least not in the current configuration. I figured out a way to make it work, but it takes a really long time. There we go. Pump 1 has arrived on that phone. Um, and we can do uh, shapes as well. So we'll just do some drawing tools. Uh, let's do that one. Okay, so we'll just draw our shape here. Let's maybe flip the phone that way. And there we go. Now we've got a nice big. Oh, well. Supposed to be a bone, but that didn't work out so great. Get your mind out of the gutters, everybody. All right, so then we can go to shape one, and we can send it. Hmm, it's sometimes randomly send stuff. It might be position updates. a little bit too big or complex for it to send. Oh, ha, never mind. It just took a minute for it to process. So there we go. We got our horrible dog bone. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, you, you do need to configure the settings so that it doesn't automatically send things at like a super high, um, what do you call it, super high frequency, like the update speed, the update interval. Um, it can, I mean, as you saw, it takes it a little bit of time to send each message. 
So if you have it set to like a two second uh, position update speed, which is the default for when you're moving quickly, um, that well, the messages take longer than two seconds. So you will never get uh, any other communication between these other than a single radio just constantly broadcasting stuff out. So uh, you do need to turn those down quite a bit, uh, especially if you got multiple radios set up and, and going all at once. Um, anyway, yeah, uh, that uh, hopefully kind of explains some of how this works.